Okay, let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the rain. We're thankful that you're the one who is in control, that a storm is not a surprise to you, and we thank you for providing all that we have. Keep us safe, help us to listen to your word today, and help our hearts to love you and to know you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, now it's time to listen to God's word. And first, I want to show you this picture. Do you know? Yeah. Do you guys know who that is? Joe Biden. Joe Biden. He's our president, right? Does anybody know who this is? Obama. No. No way. Donald Trump. Is that Joe Biden? Joe Biden is old. No, that's a good guess, though. If he's younger. Actually, somebody here got it right. He is actually. He's actually a random congressman. Um, I found his picture. I found his picture on Google because I want to tell you, there's a one person that you recognize right away, and then there's, there's a person that you don't know at all. So they're famous people, and when we talk about worshiping God, God is someone who is even greater than anyone that we think of as famous. You might think of something, someone famous like a basketball player. Uh, you know, your your that you you would recognize, but you know, God is even greater than any famous person. So, for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about the idea of worship. Last time, Auntie Alice talked about worshiping God; that God is worthy of our worship. He is Almighty. He's our Savior. He loves us. He created us, and so we want to worship Him because He's worthy. Just like we think of President Biden. If I were to ask you, do you want to go see him and take a picture with him and talk yeah, to him? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think some. I think some of us would say yes. Some of you will say yes that you do want to go see a famous person, and then you can say, "Hey, I got to see the famous. I got to see the president of the United States." But or sometimes you might not. But when we come to worship God. God is even greater than any famous person that you want to go see. So I want to tell you. I want to ask you another question. If you were going to go see a famous person like the president,、um, and you were going to go see the president, how would you get? How would you dress?、Um, normally, I'll just, just how would you dress? You would dress nice. How you could dress normally, but you might dress nicer.、No. Your parents will probably tell you dress nicer.、Uh, if you go to somebody's、um, wedding or something, you dress nicer, and you're going to be on your best behavior, right? You're going to say, "Wow, I better not be running up and down the White House. I better be up. I better be on my best behavior and do as I'm told, because you know that you're in a respectable place." And to honor a person, say with worshiping God, even a hundred million times greater than that. If we do that for the president, how much more will we do for the for a great Almighty God? We would say, yeah, we want to see God. We want to come to church to worship. I am going to be on my best behavior, and I want to do the right thing. Now, here's the thing, though. It, is it a little bit scary to go see somebody famous?、Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit scary. And in the same way, when we come to worship God, when we go to God, it should be a little scary, because after all, we are worshiping and seeing an Almighty God. Now, it would not be right if you say, "Oh, it's no big deal. I just walk into the White House anytime I want to go see the president." That's not the right attitude. And when we go see God too, you'll say, "Ah, I just go to God whenever I want. No big deal." That's not the right attitude to worship God either. But here's the interesting thing. I want to show you the the next verse. Now I'm going to talk about spending a worship is spending one on one time with God. That means you and God alone. Not you and everybody else here. Not you and your parents and your friends, but just you and God alone. And you know, even though we are, God is an awesome God, 
and we should feel a little bit scared of God, we should. That's a good, healthy kind of fear. But we also know that God wants to spend time with you. Now that's amazing. That's like a famous person. That's like a famous person saying, hey, Lucas, I want to come and, and spend time with you. I want to come to your house. I mean, a famous person wants to do that with each one of you. You're like, wow, how do they, I'm so special. Like, really? A famous person wants to spend time with me? And so here's what the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter, in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 to 16. I have it in my Bible, tapped here, but I want to read it on the board for you. Read along with me, Hebrews chapter 4. We have a high priest. High priest is Jesus. Jesus is a high priest. We have a high priest who can feel it when we are weak and hurting. So Jesus is someone who can feel it when we are hurting and weak. We have a high priest, we have Jesus, who has been tempted in every way just as we are. So Jesus has also been tempted to do wrong things. Just like we are, yeah, from Satan. But yet he did not sin. See, uh, different from us, when we get tempted to do wrong things, sometimes we'll do the wrong thing. But Jesus was tempted just like we are, but never did the wrong thing. So here's the important part I want you to know from the Bible. Let us boldly approach God's throne of grace. When we think of God's throne, when we think of a throne, when we think of a king's palace and throne, we think of, wow, way up there, you got to walk this long hallway, and then it's way up there, and it's going to be guards all around. And, you know, you might feel a little bit intimidated to go up there. Just like going to see the president, you're going to go into the White House, you have all these security guards around, and you're going to feel a little bit intimidated which is the right thing but God also tells us you can come boldly to approach the God's throne and his throne is a throne of grace now you think of a throne as like a judge as a king who's going to judge you but God's throne is not a throne of judgment if you know Jesus as your high priest if, Jesus, if you know Jesus and put your trust in him, you can approach God's throne of grace, not his throne of judgment. His throne, God's throne of judgment, is when we come before him as a sinner. We have all done wrong things. We are all sinners. If we go to God's throne as a sinner, we will face judgment. But we can go to God's throne of grace when we put our trust in Jesus to believe that he has died for our sins, then we are forgiven of our sins, then we anything that we did wrong, he forgives us. And then we can go to God's throne of grace and receive mercy in our time of need. We will find grace to help us in our time of need. Anytime we need help, we can ask God and not to be afraid of it. Now that is such a privilege for us to be able to spend time with God Go to God's throne of grace to spend one-on-one -on -one time with him. Now, let me ask you this. How many of you have a Bible at home? Okay. I think most of you have a Bible at home. If you don't have a Bible at home, you ask your parents to buy you one. Bibles are not very expensive, but it's going to be the best gift that you have. Now, how many of you pray by yourself at home? Pray to God. Okay, some of you do, and some of you don't. And I want to encourage you today to spend time with God one-on-one. -on -one. That means time, spend time with God between just you and God himself. No one else. You're not talking to anyone else. You're not playing with your friends. I want to show you this picture of me. This is how I spend time with God. This is me in my room. And this is where I spend time with God. I took this, I had my husband take a picture of me yesterday. I said, oh, I'm going to spend time with God. I want to show you guys what, what, uh, how I do it. You're going to be sitting. You find a place. Okay, you find a place. Now, this is my place. This is where I spend time with God every day. This is a corner of my room. 
I, uh, I have a shelf here where I put my Bible and other books. It's kind of messy. I charge my phone here. It's my lotion. My bed's over there. And that's my massage chair. <laughs> and uh, this is where the place I like to spend time with God. And I have my Bible where I read God's Word. I pray. I pray for you. I pray for some of my friends. I pray for our church. And then I also have a notebook where I write down whatever God is telling me. Now, we say that this is God's Word. We want to know the books of the Bible. Why? Because we want to know God. When we read it, it means something. It's not just a science book or, oh, I have to read the book. But it is a book that you learn to love God. So when I read the Bible, I um, sometimes don't understand it. Sometimes I only read one or two words. And I think about it. That's meditating. Think about, what God, what are you say, saying to me from your word? And sometimes I don't understand it, so I keep reading until I understand it. So you don't say like, oh, I'm reading, I don't understand it, put it down. The end. No, you keep reading until you understand it, and God will open your eyes. God, help me to understand your word. You wrote it for me, so help me understand it. So, and he will. But you have to be persistent and keep at it every day. So um, this is how I spend time with God. So I want to tell you, you need a Bible, you need time, and you need a place. Now let me ask you, what would be a good place in your house that would work for you to spend time with God alone? The living room, your sofa, yeah, that's a good place. Your bedroom, yeah, that's where I like to be. Yeah, you can go outside in the, in the, in the hammock, that's a great place. So you find a place that you feel very comfortable with by yourself. Nobody's going to bother you. Now, let me ask you, when is a good time for you to spend a few minutes with God by yourself? Afternoon. When is a good time? Afternoon. Okay. What else? In the morning. Ooh, you got to hurry. In the morning before you go to school. If you can't sleep, that is a good time. Yes. Before you sleep is a good time too. Now, um, in the lower class, somebody says when, it was a very good answer actually. I never thought of this answer. He said, a good time to spend with God is when I have free time in the afternoon. Now, you know when you have free time, generally, what do you want to do? Like yeah, you do whatever you want to do. Play video games, read, sleep. You think of your free time as I get to do whatever I want. Nobody has ever said, it's free time. I'm going to spend it with God. So I want you to try that. Boys and girls, I, I learned that from the other class. When you have some free time, you say, oh, hey, this is free time. I'm going to spend five minutes of it to spend with God. I'm going to go to my room. I'm going to go to the couch. I'm going to go, you know, on my hammock. And I'm going to take my Bible. I'm going to pray, read the Bible, and spend some time with God five minutes. And then you still have other free time. So that is a great way to be able to spend one-on-one -on -one time with God. Because you know when you want to spend time with God, when you think about wanting to spend time with God, I want you to know that Jesus is the one who already is ready to spend time with you. Can you believe that? The God of the universe. The one who created you, our Heavenly Father, wants to spend time with you. The slide is not coming up, but I will read it to you from my Bible. It's in Revelation chapter 3. Revelation, where do I find the book of Revelation? Last book of the Bible, that's right. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus says, oh, there it is, thank you very much. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him, him and eat with him and he with me. Can you imagine, Jeff? Can you imagine when you have free time, before you go to sleep at night, uh, maybe even in the morning, Jesus is knocking on your door. And Jesus is saying, hey, if you hear my voice, open the door. And I will come in to eat with you. Eating is a very um, a, 
uh, very type is a type of friendship. Now this is figurative writing. Figurative that means is not literal. Is Jesus calling to you in your heart, and you say yes. Jesus, I want to spend time with you. Jesus is knocking at the door. That will you open the door to spend time with Jesus? So next slide, please. The main idea, the main idea today is, God wants to spend time with you. Will you make time for God? That's how we worship God. We worship coming to church. We also worship by spending one-on-one -on -one time with God. But if you have, do you have any questions before we close? So if you read your Bible with your family, that's great. You can also do that one on one with God alone. And you're not trying to impress anyone. You're not trying to impress your parents or your Sunday school teacher or me or anything. It's just between you and God, and that's how we worship. We worship God together at church. We also worship God one on one. That's very good. That's spending time with God when you pray one on one. So if you can only do oh Monday's my best day, but Tuesday I'm too busy. Well, is there any time that maybe on a Wednesday you can have two minutes? So you try to look for little nuggets of time, little nuggets of time, and then you can increase. So don't say I can't do it except Mondays. Then you know you already closed the door, right? You say God, I want to. So would you help me find something, sometime? Because it's your heart's desire. Sometimes you guys have very, very busy lives, but just like, just like what the、uh, lower grade class says, sometimes you have some free time. Free time, you want to do your own thing, but free time is also time to spend with God. You might have more time than you think. Maybe even in the car, you're driving from one place to another in the car. You can just quietly talk to God. Say, God, you're knocking at the door. I hear you knocking. And I want to talk to you. Okay. All right. Let's、uh, pray together. Dear God, we thank you that you love us so much that you want to spend time with us. Thank you that you're the God of the universe, and yet you allow us to come to the throne of the praise because of what Jesus has done for us. That when we put our trust in Jesus, we can ha have a relationship with you. So, Lord, I pray for all the boys and girls here that if they don't know Jesus. That you hope in their hearts, they they would know Jesus, and they would want to spend time with you as you are waiting for us at the door. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.